The National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey, or NHANES as it's called, is a program of studies designed to assess the health and nutritional status of adults and children in the United States. The survey is unique in that it combines interviews and physical examinations. The very first NHANES was conducted in 1971, and the surveys have become an annual event in 1999. The first report on the different variables that were collected were published in 2001. Findings from the survey are used to determine the prevalence of major diseases and risk factors for diseases. Information is used to assess nutritional status and its association with health promotion and disease prevention. Whenever you read in a published document that a certain percentage of Americans eats a certain amount of food or a particular food item or engages in X amount of time in physical activity, etc., it's probably data that comes from this large U.S. study. In Haines findings serve as the basis for national standards like measuring height and weight and blood pressure. Data from the surveys are used in epidemiological studies and health science research, and this helps us in turn develop sound public health policies. Perhaps you have heard of the Dietary Guidelines for Americans. These are often fashioned in response to the information that's gained from these wide studies. NHANES data can help direct and design health programs and services and expand health knowledge. The NHANES is the most in-depth and logistically complex survey. It's designed to assess, as I said, the health and nutritional status of Americans. This comprehensive survey combines personal interviews with standardized physical examinations, diagnostic procedures, and lab tests on approximately 5,000 people from randomly selected cities around the country each year. This slide lists all the variables that are analyzed, but understand that there would be subcategories in each one of these. For example, under nutrition, they do extensive 24-hour recalls and conduct an analysis of those. And so the, it's just phenomenal the amount of data that has to be processed from these uh, research investigations. In 2011, Troy was chosen as one of the 15 cities for annual data collection. So the university allocated space near the football field for the trailers to collect data for almost two months. In addition to having patients come to the trailers and be interviewed and have data collected, home-based interviews were done. Findings from the survey are used to determine prevalence of major disease and risk factors, and so it's important to randomly select cities from all over the country so that we get a good representation. Now these are no ordinary travel trailers. These mobile examination centers are very high-tech. So one day when it was obvious that the parking lot was empty and subjects were not being screened, I packed my cheap little camera and knocked on the door and asked the program director for a tour. She was happy to provide, and the first place that we are introduced to were anthropometric variable measurements. Height or length, weight, circumferences, and BMI are all collected. Weight and height are not manually recorded. To avoid error, as soon as the footboard on this recumbent board that you see here touches the feet or the paddle board on the stadiometer touches the subject's head, the length is automatically recorded to the computer. So absolutely no risk of error in this type of um, system. And here you see the uh, stadiometer for individuals who are above age 2 and are able to stand. I like the fact that the scales were inconspicuously placed in the corner. Neither the subject nor the technician ever saw the weight. The subject stands on this metal object that almost looks like a floor rug, and the weight was automatically recorded in the computer. My tour guide, Janice Eklund, demonstrated an emerging anthropometric variable, something that you probably haven't read about in your books. It's called the sagittal abdominal diameter. 
They're collecting data on it now for a futuristic uh, assessment tool that's going to replace the BMI. NHANES also measures lung function using spirometry. All subjects complete a 24-hour diet recall using the five-step multi-pass method. They have a number of visual aids, as you can see here, to accurately capture portion sizes of foods consumed on the previous day. So if a person came in and said that for the previous day that they had a serving of a particular fluid, they would have every cup measure with all the gradations on it to as, as accurately as possible estimate the previous day's intake. All of that is entered into a, a very comprehensive nutrition database and um, is used to assess the eating habits of Americans using group multi-data. They have a closed system computer room where subjects can answer questions that are of a more sensitive nature by either typing it on the phone, on the computer, or listening to questions on a headphone and responding uh, by taping their responses. So this environment helps to elicit more accurate information and avoid any possible embarrassment or misrepresentation. They also had the um, closed room there where you could have your hearing assessed by an audiologist. They had a dental exam area to monitor the dental health of the U.S. population. And they could measure body composition using one of the gold standards, the DEXA. DEXA is a low-level x-ray. It's one of the most reliable methods of measuring bone density and body composition, including fat, water, and muscle. And here you see a picture of the actual machine. The entire process just takes a few minutes. It's a very low level of x-ray and as it passes through the body it can distinguish between the various tissues and give a very accurate representation of body composition. Subjects also complete a, a two-hour glucose tolerance test. They're asked to collect a 24-hour urine sample and return it by mail or drop it off in person to the mobile units. Janice told me that amazingly 98% of the subjects are compliant with this request. There's a phlebotomist on hand to collect blood samples and send to the lab. And the sample doesn't have to go so very far for analysis because the mobile units boast a fully functioning lab capable of assessing blood lipids, glucose, vitamin levels, they check for anemia, they measure inflammatory markers, they conduct urinalysis, and many other lab tests, all on site. Again, this reduces error. One of the last stations in the trailers is to test grip strength. And grip strength is uh, correlated to a number of other health indicators, but this is the standardized device that they use. Subjects also agree to have their activity level monitored for several days. They wear these accelerometers on the waist and it will collect data on their movements in four planes of motion. This information is stored on the units and downloaded into computer software for analysis on the physical activity habits of Americans. So they're again very high-tech devices that are capturing the data beyond just self-reported information. And I had my picture made with Janice, who is a registered dietitian and a project director on this particular site. And that's a tour of Inhanes.